Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first season of Andor. So Andor is a two-part limited series set within the Star Wars universe. It serves as a prequel to Rogue One and has already been renewed for a second and final season which is currently in production and will lead up to the events of Rogue One. The story centers on Cassian Andor as he joins the Rebel Alliance for the first time. So as I've said before in some of my previous Star Wars videos, I am a big fan of the franchise as it is essentially my childhood, but I've only covered the live action series on this channel, such as The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So you can check all that out if you want to first. As for Andor, I thought it was pretty good and I'm actually excited for the second season, especially since I was a huge fan of Rogue One when it first came out. I mean, I saw it in theaters and I had a blast. So let's get into it. So first things first, let's have a look at the characters. Firstly, we have the man himself, Cassian Andor, played once again by Diego Luna. Cassian starts out as a thief and as a cynic before slowly transitioning into a passionate war hero. And the series also explores his origins earlier on. As far as other characters are concerned, you have Luthen Rail, played by Stellan Skarsgård, who you might remember as Bootstrap Biltana from Pirates of the Caribbean. Luthen is a member of the Rebel Alliance, who has a strong influence on Cassian throughout the series. And considering the galaxy is now under the rule of the Galactic Empire, he publicly poses as an antique dealer on Coruscant. There's Bix Kayleen, a mechanic and black market dealer who is a close friend and ally of Cassian's. Cassian also has an adoptive mother by the name of Marva, and she's played by Fiona Shaw, who you'll probably remember as Petunia Dursley from the Harry Potter movies. Cyril Khan is a deputy inspector working for the Empire who is tasked with capturing Cassian. The thing about Cyril is that he has a specific need and desire to impress given his job description and the series does try to humanize him a little bit. There's Dedra Miro, a supervisor for the Imperial Security Bureau. And her character arc is a smart little commentary on gender politics in the age of the Empire. Sure, it's a form of wokeness and political correctness and all that stuff, but in the good kind of way. And making yet another appearance in the Star Wars universe is Mon Mothma, a character who was introduced way back in Return of the Jedi. In this particular series, she's a member of the Imperial Senate, but she is secretly trying to finance the Rebel Alliance. And we also get a glimpse into her personal life. And the last character I wanted to mention is Kino Loy, played by Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis previously played Supreme Leader Snoke in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. And while the potential with that character was completely wasted, Kino Loy is easily one of the best characters in the show. He's a prisoner and a floor manager at a prison facility on the planet Narkina 5. And the episodes within that facility are among the best of the show. Now it is possible for there to be some kind of connection between Kino Loy and Snoke, and it could be explored in future Star Wars media. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And yeah, those were pretty much the most pivotal characters of the show so I'll just leave it at that. Aside from the characters, this show is pretty much a political thriller with spy elements and that's due in large part to the involvement of Tony Gilroy who created the show. For those of you who don't know, Tony Gilroy is a writer and director who has been involved not only in other Star Wars media but also in the Jason Bourne movies. So if you like those movies, you might like this series too. I also like the action scenes mainly because they're a bit more grounded compared to what you see in the movies. You know when you watch a movie like Rogue One, not only do you feel like you're watching a Star Wars movie, but you feel like you're experiencing an actual war movie. You know I think it nailed the war aesthetics better than most Star Wars movies out there. So with Andor being a spy thriller series, the action doesn't get too overblown. The show is also a bit more mature compared to other Star Wars media. Not that it's rated R or anything, but there's content in here you wouldn't really expect from a Star Wars series. 
and the finale perfectly tied up a lot of loose ends while also laying the groundwork for the second and final season. Now the only complaint I have with Andor is the pacing. The series comprises of 12 episodes when it really could have been anywhere between 7 to 9 episodes. You know, the events of the first 3 episodes could have been condensed into one. The events of the next 3 episodes could have been condensed into a single episode. And yeah, if they had shaved off some of the excess and trimmed a bit of the fat, I think it would have been paced better. But overall, this is still an excellent series. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Andor. As an addition to the Star Wars universe, I loved it. And I'm really excited for Season 2 whenever that eventually comes out. So next time, I'm going to do a quick ranking of the entire Walking Dead universe now that the main series is over. So look forward to that soon guys. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like the video, share and subscribe, ring the bell, take care and I'll see you soon.